Hello everyone, and welcome back to All The Mods 6. Uh, let's just start off by saying, I like your base. I, I reckon it's pretty cool that we've uh, started expanding out and, and building things in new places, um, compared to just having everything, you know, in our base. Not a clue what that boop just was. Did you guys hear that? My Honestly, my computer is scaring me. Yesterday, it was lagging like crazy. I think I fixed that problem a bit. Um, I've upped the render distance just up to four, just so that we can see a little bit more. But um, I can lower that to it if it's getting a bit bad. But um, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. This episode, I might as well start on. We're gonna mainly check out Tinker's construct. It's been updated to the to this version of Minecraft 1.16, and it's actually changed quite a few things. So I'm gonna be learning about it too. I, I, I've used Tinker's before, but um, some of the new changes look a little bit interesting to me. Um, and another thing I'm gonna do is something that you guys told me about, which was apparently a big issue we're having is that we don't have enough power um, in these machines, or at the very least, they're not efficient enough. Like, currently, this guy needs, apparently, 156 million RF. Um, I thought it was fine because this bar's full, but it was running slower than I guess I thought it would. So, what we're going to do is we're going to check out these energy upgrades, which... It appears to just be glass, infused alloy, and gold dust, which should be easy. We have all of this stuff automated. And then after I check out these energy upgrades, I want to check out gas upgrades. Apparently, these increase the efficiency of gas using machinery. And if you remember our setup over here, we have quite a few gas pipes over here and, and gas using machines. I, I, I think. I think they're gas using machines. So, um, this should be pretty simple to do. I think all we're going to do is grab these two templates. So, this guy and the gas upgrade. And we should just be able to start ordering them. Um, now, I don't know if they all hold eight, because if you remember, with the speed upgrades, um, they hold they hold eight speed upgrades, eight out of eight. I think it might be different for other um, upgrades. So let's give this a try. Let's search energy. I mean, we... Oh, apparently I clicked on the wrong thing. Um, we might as well order eight of them and see if that's how much it is. So I'll request eight. Um... I'll get the gas upgrade too, at least ordered. I don't, they should be crafting instantly, and I think they were, um, but we, we still might as well queue it up. So let's get these energy upgrades and place them in here. So let's see. The first one goes in. Um, amount, one out of eight. Yeah, so, so they hold eight, and you can see the effect going up two times, three times, four times. And we'll check in a second if this is uh, increasing the capacity of energy it stores or the efficiency. So now it's 10 times. Let's go back. It still says it needs 156 million RF. But over here, now we hold 360 RF, which I think is a lot more. Um, and I think we can actually test this out by ordering some of these evaporation blocks, which require um, steel, which we make in this infusing factory. So let's do that. See how this works? Why do I hear them elsewhere? Why does it sound like they're being smelted? Oh, because they are. You know what? I reckon we need to slap some upgrades in this guy too. He has the speed upgrades. Let's <laughs> let's get the energy upgrades. Hopefully before they finish. Boom, 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 boom. The reason uh, that Tinkers thing keeps showing up is because I've got them all bookmarked there. And they kind of overlap. They, they overlap a little bit. This should craft instantly, which it does, which is beautiful. Let's quickly shove these in here. And let's watch. So you can see the amount of power it's storing going up. I don't necessarily see the speed changing all too much. So I I, I don't really know. I'm not sure if it was working. Um, how's this guy going? Did we get all of the stuff? I, I feel like something's going on. You know what? We must have smelted a bunch of steel the other day. So what if we just ask for double this? Now is it going to... Yeah, here we go. So this guy's back in action. He doesn't appear to be going any faster, despite having all the energy. So I don't necessarily think that energy was the issue. Using 400 RF per tick needed 156. Is that million RF? Or is that like Miller RF? You know, like, uh, honestly, not really sure. And, and I know it says FE, but I'm pretty sure they're a one-to-one. -one. Um, okay, well, we'll just ignore that for now. Um, we will, however put some upgrades over here. I think I'll just try out the gas upgrades then, because the energy upgrades didn't seem to do much. I I, I could be wrong. Let, let me know if I am wrong, but I, I didn't notice a difference there um, when putting them in and, and whatnot. So let's grab these. I'm not sure how many gas things we have. Do these count as gas? 
Now, yeah, they won't let you put upgrades in if you're not allowed to. Did I just somehow duplicate them? No, okay, just a bug. Um, it, it actually cycles here as well. Supported, energy, muffling, probably speed and stuff. Um, speed we don't need to worry about because we're using it as soon as it gets in here, so it's, that's not worth it. Um, this guy might be a gas guy, but, but once again, he doesn't really look like he needs it, but I don't know if efficiency is necessarily speed, right? Efficiency might... You might get more bang out of your buck. Nope. I'm not actually allowed to put any in there too. Okay. Can I put stuff in this? This guy uses gas, I think. Okay, yeah, I can put it in this guy. Okay. Um, something else uses gas. Oxygen? Can I put it in here? Oh, I can. Okay. So these should, I think, use less um, of the gas, right? Because you can put speed upgrades in too. So, so it doesn't make them faster. It makes them more efficient. Um, and they can hold 8 out of 8. And so now this guy should be 10 times as efficient. Okay. And so should this guy, which doesn't really matter because it's just uh, oxygen. Um, but still. And, and honestly, we probably should put speed upgrades in these guys. Especially in this guy. This guy's a bit slow. Um, do anything else use gas? I don't particularly think... This guy... No, they use slurries, don't they? Yeah, they use water and, and liquids. Okay. Um, I, I guess that's all sped up. Let's, ah, let's move on to the, to the big deal. What we're all waiting for. And that is Tinker's Construct. I I really enjoyed this mod. Now, th this pack actually has silent gear. Which I, I honestly thought was just Tinker's Construct, but like newer. Like I thought this was what they were going for. Um, like this was their next step. Sort of like how Thorncraft changed over the years from being really simple to really advanced. I thought they were doing that. Um, I, I enjoyed this. I wouldn't say any's less or like better or worse. All I'd say is Tinker's has a cool smell tree. As far as I know. Um, Silent Gear doesn't. So, so that's where they lose out, in my opinion. Um, so for Tinker's Construct, in this update, there's a few other things. Um, some of these might have been in previous versions of Tinker's, but I just might not have messed, up, messed around with them. For example, the Seared Heater, solid fuel source for the Melter. And this is the Melter here. First Smeltery, place above a Seared Tank or Heater to fuel. So I assume we can place it over this Heater. Um, I don't necessarily think we need to make these, but I might make them... Um, purely for the sake of, uh, checking it out, right? Um, but because it, if I was playing this pack brand new, I might want to check that out, right? Like, at, at the moment, I have the resources to probably go for an even better smeltery, but we'll, we'll start off with the basics just to see how it goes. Um, and I'm probably going to auto craft a lot of these things. What they all pretty much boil down to is seared bricks, which you get from smelting grout, which you get from crafting with gravel, clay, and sand. You can use the clay bowl, or you can use the full block of clay with uh, four times the other stuff. So now, in the clay department, we actually have a lot of clay. I'm not sure where we've mined it from, but we've definitely mined it. So, yeah, that, 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 that's how we've gotten it. I don't think we have any other way of getting it. So we're probably going to use the clay ball recipe. So we'll do that. That should be fine. Um, the seared brick recipe, we'll probably do this too. Um, just smelt it in a furnace and we'll chuck it in one of our fast smelters. Um, and, I mean, that's... Pretty much it. I think the rest of the stuff we can probably uh, craft ourselves. What I will actually check out, though, is the seared glass. I might make that into a recipe, as well as... Well, I think that's pretty much it, to be honest. All right. These guys, I'm going to slap in here. Um, two of them, anyway. The smelting thing is going to obviously come over here and go into this guy. Then we will search up for um, seared bricks. And honestly, we're probably going to want a lot of these. So let's go Let's go big or go home. And I don't really want to go home. So I think what's happening is we're making some sand. No? Oh, we're making some gravel for the grout. But we're obviously smelting some up already. So we can actually get started with some of these recipes. Um, so obviously, we'll start off with this seared melter first. Um, so it needs a seared uh, gauge. Is that how you're going to pronounce it? I don't know. Gorge, gauge. Who knows? Um, so this just uses some glass and some seared bricks. So just normal glass, nothing, uh, none of the seared glass. Um, and what does this guy do? Um, holding three molten blocks retains liquid when broken. Um, so I guess you put liquid uh, metals in here, right? So we'll craft our melter, which is just that gauge uh, in between this. And then I think we'll go for two things. We'll check out the seared tank, because it says that you can use a seared tank underneath it. Um, and we'll also check out the seared heater, which uses solid fuel instead. And I'll, I'll show off what that means exactly. So, where can we set this up? Um, I reckon it might look nice over here. Um, I want to make sure that I'm in my claim, because obviously this little square over here is not claimed. 
Um, this looks nice. Let's clear the land. <laughs> nice and simple. Um, and we'll start off with probably just... Ah, right, yeah. We, we, we can place it here. So, I think we'll... I guess we'll start off with the tank. Um, and we'll place the Malta on top. And this is how it looks. And I think you know it's working because it has the cool effect. Yeah, if, if we don't have anything underneath it, it doesn't light up. So, we'll place the tank back. Um, and what we're actually going to need is some sort of fuel. Now, I wonder if we can see the fuels that it uses. Oh, we can. Look at this. So, we can use lava, soul lava, molten blaze, and that looks to be it. Um, so, that is very interesting. And then, as you can see, pretty much anything you can smelt goes in here. Now, what I am curious about is what these are. I wonder if this is just saying um, for the uh, solid guy, right? Um, this guy, the seared heater. I, I wonder if that's what that recipe is for. Um, so let's grab our lava bucket because that's all we really have at the moment. I think some of the other fuels uh, do different speeds as well. Does it say? Yeah, speed multipliers. So soul lava does five times um, and molten blaze does 1.5 and lava just does one. Um, so obviously if you can get any of those other ones, that would be pretty cool. But here we go. You just put the lava in. It has a little animation and it rises up. Then you open up here and you can melt some liquids. So I think what we can do is... We, we don't really have... Well, I guess we do have quite a few ores. Um, what could we smelt up? You know what? I think we should check out um, platinum. See if this works. So, I'm going to put one platinum in. Um, and as you can see, it's heating up. It, it's using a tiny bit of lava to do this. Um, it's heating up actually pretty fast from what I remember. Maybe platinum just has a low melting point. And then inside here, you can see we have one ingot and three nuggets. So, it didn't quite double it. But we did get, you know, three extra nuggets out of it. So, so that's pretty good. Um, and then I'm not actually sure how you take stuff out of this guy. Uh, I have a few guesses. One of which is with this guy, Seared Faucet. You actually get two from the one recipe, which is pretty cool. Um, another thing we'll need is a casting table. Um, and that might be fine. Another thing I think we need is a little bit of gold. So we'll grab some of this. And we actually want to smelt up the gold. So I'll put in... Maybe two ingots. Um, I no, you can't stack them. So, so they have, you can only smelt three things at once. Um, what does this say? Not enough free space for the fluid. Really? How interesting. Okay. Um, if that's the case, then maybe don't want to put more platinum in. Maybe you can only have one of each block. And as as you can see, you can actually see the stuff in here. What happens if I put more in? They they just sort of squeeze in there. You could definitely fit four. Who are they kidding? Uh, you know what? I guess they need to leave leave space for the liquid. Right? Um, so now what, what do we have? Five ingots, three nuggets. Put in maybe two more. Um, and what we're going to make instead is one of these. A casting basin. So the difference between these is a casting table, you cast intricate things. Like um, you can cast pickaxe heads or even ingots or fill up buckets and that sort of thing. Um, with the basin, it deals more with blocks. So you can fill up a block of the molten uh, the molten metal and it will cool and you know turn into a block. Or you can even uh, make some other cool recipes. Like I'm pretty sure you can put cobblestone in a basin. I'm just seeing if the recipe is up here. Yeah, you can put cobblestone in a basin, pour some clay on top, and you'll get seared cobblestone. So that's pretty cool. Um, so this guy now has eight ingots. Um, we'll put one more in. And we'll actually, hmm, I wonder if I can put an actual ingot in. Um, platinum. All right, let's put one ingot in. Have this guy smelt up. That way we have nine ingots, which is obviously perfect for a block. So here we go. One block. Let's place this directly on the side so I see it force and see if this works. I'm going to right-click it. Sure enough, it works. So this is draining all of this liquid out, filling up this basin with a cool visual, and you can actually see it completely cool down. That is pretty cool. And then you can right-click it, and you got yourself a block of platinum. How sweet is that? Um, so what I was actually going to do is place down a casting table and put in a little bit of gold. I'm not sure how much we need. I think maybe just one will be enough. I'm going to use one of these platinum ingots. So one uh, gold ingot is in here. We're going to place an ingot on this casting table. And then we're going to pour out the gold if I click the faucet. So there we go. Um, is that cooling? It is. So there we go. Now we have an ingot gold cast. And this guy is really cool because... We can, you know, smelt up our three ores or whatever. Wait for it to happen. So then we've got four ingots. And we can pour these ingots into the cast. And as you can see, they will cool. And you have yourself an ingot. And you can actually pipe out of these from what I remember. So 
We could, for instance, set up one of these guys. You can also place a hopper underneath, if that's more your style. Um, let's see. Chest. Boom, boom, boom. I should have my pipe wrench on me. I think I do. Oh, boom. Place a chest and have this extract. Pour in the ingot. And then the second it cools, it should get taken out and put in here. So, as you can see, already there's some automation you can sort of do here. And this actual guy here, I think we can get away with using a clock. Um... So this one should work. Let's place it here. Oh. And I'm pretty sure every time, yeah, every time it pulses redstone, it pours out the liquid. So we can um, lower the delay on this so it happens more often. Lower the duration to one. And as you can see... Oh, oh it's, it's out of stuff. But um, we'll, we'll put more in for the test. So here we go. As you can see, it is automatically harvesting it and doing all that sort of stuff. I think as well... You might be able to get away with piping stuff into it. Um, you know, we, we can probably do a, an interesting test here where we just do something a little bit like this. Let's see if this works. Will it put... Um, let's just put an ingot in. I want to see if it will smelt the ingot into a liquid, cast it, and then put it back in. This would obviously be pointless, but it would prove the fact that you can automate it, right? And, and we're mainly just testing here. So yeah, the ingot goes right back in. Pretty cool. Um, but, clearly, this guy's very small, he's not the most efficient, um, so we're gonna want to go for something a little bit, a little bit bigger. Well, actually, before I finish up here, I thought I'd show off the heater real quick, um, because I don't know if I've ever used this before. I think I just put coal in here, and then put an ingot in. What is this? Not enough heat to melt this item. No fuel found. Huh. No fuel found. Maybe is that not enough? Huh. How peculiar. Oh, there we go. So I guess maybe it's not hot enough for the platinum to melt? Alright, the, the platinum needs 970 degrees. And as you can see, it's showing only lavas here. Um, whereas the gold... Yeah, look at this. The gold only needs 700. And that can be achieved by charcoal and wood, which burns at 800 degrees Celsius. That is really cool. I like that. I, I, I like that a lot. Um, we're just going to waste it away. It's just one ingot's worth. All right. The next on our list is the big boy, the smeltery itself. So we're going to need a smeltery controller. Um, oh, that's very interesting. So the smeltery controller actually uses the seared heater, the solid fuel source for the melter in a, in a basin. That is really cool. So you actually do need to craft this thing. Okay. So I guess it's a good thing that we unintentionally made one of these. So... We're going to place the tank underneath this guy. Place the melter on top. Um, then we're going to get a basin. We're going to place the heater in here. And as you can see, it's, it's been placed in. I wonder, can you see like the side of it? Oh, you can. Look. It, like the block's actually in there. It, it's different on the on the sides. Um, 3D textures. You got to love them. Um, so now we need copper, which we have here. And I think it was four... How, how, how much was it for one of these? Four ingots. So... This and a little bit more. We might need a little bit of lava, but that's fine. We we have infinite of it, assuming the nether doesn't run out. An extra ingot here. Also, you can pour out um, before having all your liquids, right? So, I could pour in three ingots into here. Wait until the, the fourth ingot's in there, and then pour it. But as we can see, it's cooled, I believe. And here we go, smeltery controller. So, let's slap this guy down right here. Smeltery controller. What do we think? I reckon it looks pretty cool. I, I like this visual. I, I like it a lot. And I like that it incorporated the copper. Like, the, the texture uses copper, so it had copper in it. Um, I think the only other thing I would say is maybe a bit of glass. Because it does look like it has, you know, a little bit of a glass panel. Um, <laughs> but, but that's just me being a little bit, you know, picky, I guess. Because um, you could argue the same with this basin that has holes in the side of it, but you pour liquids into it. Um, so, so I guess it depends on how real you want to get. Um, let's put the melter away. I, I don't think we need it anymore. Um, now, the last thing we need... Well, not the last thing, but the other thing we need are bricks, which are made with four bricks. Um, now, you can use a bunch of different seared things. If I search seared, um, you should be able to see... Yeah, a bunch of stuff here. So, you can use cracked bricks, uh, fancy ones. You can even just use stone um, or even seared cobblestone, which we saw before was cobblestone with clay on it. And clay, um, I guess you just get from... You know, smelting clay. <laughs> I, I guess it makes sense, but it might be more efficient um, because you can look at how much ingots it uses, how many things it uses. 
Um, you know, you can break it all down. Um, I, I, I'm not too sure what's more efficient, but we're going to set up a smeltery. I'm going to try and do it the way that I used to do it and see if that works. Um, but it could have changed. I'm not too sure. So you, normally you would start out with the floor, but essentially you have a frame like this, right? So you would have a three by three floor. The corners you wouldn't have to worry about. So like um, these bits around the outside, you don't have to fill in. But you would put a three by three like this and build up along the walls like that. And as you can see, it's actually lit up. It's working. Even though there's no tank, which seems a bit counterintuitive. I wonder, normally it has to be attached to like this block, but can I put it on a corner? No. Okay. So, so I, I, I was just checking maybe like, ooh, that was squared now. Um, but what we can do is we could probably hide this around back because it's probably not going to look the greatest. Um, we can place a tank like so, just as long as it's, uh, you know, within this frame, within this structure. Um, and now it has the lava in here and it holds the amount of space it has in between. So we should see what, three, six, nine. And as you can see, we have nine empty blocks worth inside this smeltery structure. And if we take it up, it should go up to what, 18? Boom, boom, boom. And as we can see, now it has 18 spots. I'm not going to count them, but you know, you can you can count them if you want. If you don't trust me. Um, another cool thing we can do is actually get glass. Now you can use windows um, or you can use glass. Windows apparently store liquids um, and they work as a tank. So for instance, you could replace this tank with um, this seared window and fill it with lava if you wanted to see more of the lava, right? That'd be pretty cool. Um, what I'm probably going to do, though, is make a bunch of these seared glass. Assuming I have seared bricks, which it doesn't seem like I do, so maybe I will craft a few more of those. All right, let's see how many we can get. Boom, 11. Um, so I'm going to probably put these at the front, just, just because I feel like that will look cool. So we can do this. Um, we can obviously also put this controller at the back, or like, you know, spin it around, make it look a little bit better. Um, we could probably also... If we really, if we really care about how it looks, we could put this under there just to make it look a little less weird. Um, and yeah, this, this is pretty much it. So uh, uh, another cool thing about this mod is it's not just about you know melting things down. Like we can put in all of these um, things and they'll all smelt. I, I think it uses the same amount of lava no matter how many things you put in here. So it would use the fifty mil buckets whether we put in one platinum ore or whether we put in. 100 million, right? Eh, maybe not. I don't know. It seems like it though, right? It seems like it's a lot more efficient. Um, so there we go. We have four blocks worth. Um, hmm, what was I going to say next? Um, we'll, 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 here, here, we'll, we'll continue with the current train of thought, right? In order to get the liquids out now, I think we need seared drains. Previously, it was just one block called a seared drain. Now they kind of look a little bit different. You have a sear drain, so this still exists. Um, smeltery fluid input and output. You now also have a sear duct, which is a filtered smeltery fluid input and output using copper cans or buckets. What are copper cans? Cobalt ingots. Oh, I, uh, the recipe might have changed. Oh, well, I guess not. I don't know. Um, and then you have a seared chute. Smeltery item input and output. Okay. So all different ways to automate it. I guess that way you don't have to pipe into the smeltery controller. You can set up um, one of these chutes at the back for the item input and output, which sounds pretty cool. I, I like that. I reckon that sounds cool. Um, I'm just sort of learning a bit. So yeah, th there's a lot of new automation things that you can get. Um, we're just after a seared drain at the moment. So let's see if we can get one of those. A seared drain. Boom. Um, so this guy, I think we could just place here if it wants to break. And here's how it looks. It has like a little window in it with the liquid. Uh, I guess whatever type of liquid is in there. I'm kind of curious though. Let me chuck in some copper. <laughs> the ingots look a little bit weird when you place them like this. To be fair though, I don't know how you could have ingots appear in here and not look weird. Like I, I, I can't really figure out how you do it, but the layering is pretty cool. Now, what does this look like? It still just shows, I guess, whatever liquid's at the bottom. And I think if you left click, it puts a new liquid at the bottom. So now we can see it's outputting copper. I reckon that is really cool. I honestly, I'm a big fan of this. I'm a very big fan of the changes. I, I think this is the perfect direction. I, I think they've moved forward in, in, in the perfect direction. I, I like all of these changes so far. Um, so now what we can do is place our basin. Um, we can place our faucet. And actually, I want to try one more thing before we do this. I want to try out a sear channel. 
I always liked the idea of these, but they never really worked as I would have thought. So I think how it works is you can place a faucet here and then sort of build a one of these. You can build like a channel that goes elsewhere until eventually you get to one of these. Uh, okay, I, th I think I figured it out. I, th I think I figured it out. So I'll place these and you can actually right click these to disconnect them. And then instead of placing another faucet at the end for them to pour out, what you do is you place something underneath it, you stand on top and you right click the bottom of it. And as you can see, it made a hole, right? So now what we should see is if we pick whatever one we want, like I guess we can take the copper out or whatever's at the bottom, the platinum. I should be able to right click this. It'll pour the liquid. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> um, it does not seem to have worked. I'm not too sure why. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I guess they have directions as well. Flow outwards, flow outwards. Yeah, they have little arrows. Do you see that? These tiny little arrows change direction. Okay, so now it should work. Now I should be able to right click this and the liquid pours all through here and into where it needs to go. How cool is that? So essentially, you can have this system run through your entire base and look beautiful. Um, now the problem is they do ret they do seem to retrain uh, ret what, what word am I looking for retain yeah re retain a little bit of uh, liquid in them as you can see it like poured a little bit out I'm wondering though and we'll check when we get to the copper if that's because we messed up at the start right we we had it go the wrong direction before so I'm wondering if that's all that is all right so this should be the last bit so now I've got copper at the bottom I'll wait for this to empty and let's see if it keeps any in the um in the tube, right? We only have two blocks in here, so I should right-click. And I'm hoping it leaves no residue. I'm hoping. We'll, we'll, we're about to find out, though. No, it still does. Interesting. I wonder why that is. And then it's just going to pour in at the end. Which I'm not the biggest fan of, but I guess it's okay. At the end of the day, honestly, I, I feel like this is probably <laughs> very much more of a, a visual thing as opposed to a practicality thing, I think. I could be wrong on that. That may maybe there's like a genius way you can use it, but um, I'm not too sure of it. So uh, I guess we can leave that there and we'll make a new faucet on this side, a new drain. So I think what we're going to do this time is check out um, items, right? Check out tools and all that sort of thing. H how long has this episode been going? I it's been going quite long, but th this is going to be pr pretty fun. Um, this time in Tinkers, instead of just having a whole bunch of different stations, like um, previously it was, you could have the Tinker station... You would have like a... Actually, I don't think it was even called a Tinker Station. You'd have like a part builder, um, a stencil table, a tool station, um, and there was another thing. I, I, I cannot seem to think of what it was called. Uh, but, but you'd have like four different things. They would each have a part chest. Um, but now, it seems like there's a Tinker Station, a modifier chest, a part chest, a cast chest, which I think is amazing. Previously, this didn't exist for whatever reason. The, the, um, there was a stencil chest or something like that, a pattern chest, but you couldn't put casts in it, which was very strange. Um, and now they've got a Tinker's Anvil as well, which uses um, blocks of something, right? And, and it seems to be blocks of different types of alloys. Um, so if I have a look at Tinker's um, Tinker Anvil, you can see them all here. There's like steel, um, what's this? There's like pewter, Constantin, Electrum, all of these different things I think are all alloys. So, so it sort of encourages you to use the mod before just jumping to the um, to the end of the mod, which is sort of what we had to do for the smelter and controller. We had to check out the melter in order to get this guy, but which I think is pretty cool. It, it um, it means that there's not part of, parts of the mod that are just you know useless. Um, so where do we want to get started? I think we want to get started with the tinker station. Now this uses patterns; they still exist apparently. Um, sticks and planks. So we'll make a few of these. Um, just a bunch of them. I don't know if we'll need them all. Um, so we're going to make a tinker station, planks, and the patterns. This should be pretty cool. And, and it uses the legs of whatever wood you give it. So we've got a nice pine one. Um, I say nice. It might not actually be nice. It might be very ugly. Um, where do I want to put this guy? Um, I guess we can maybe clear a little bit here. Okay, right, so tinker station. How does this guy look? Okay. Um, so if I want a pickaxe, for instance... It's telling me I need a pickaxe head, a tool rod, and a tool binding. Interesting. Okay. So, clearly we need something else. Hmm. So, we obviously want a pickaxe head. Now, how can we go about doing that? Is the only way to make it with cast? 
I, I don't think that's possible because we need a pickaxe head to begin with. Apparently you can make it out of sand. That is really interesting. Casting table. Blank sand cast, which is made just with sand. Very interesting. I, I've th This is also new to me. Um, Let's get some sand. We might have to craft some, but that should be fine. Okay, right, here's some sand. So one of these should give me blank sand casts. Then I place them in a casting table. And then what do I do? Ooh, here we go. There is a part builder. It sort of blends in here with the Tinker Station, but it is here, a part builder. That is what we need. That makes a lot more sense. I was looking through, like, how do I do this? Um, part builder. So, two patterns, and I think it was just two planks. And we have ourselves a part builder. This guy makes more sense. So, inside here, we need to place in uh, some of those patterns we made. Some of these guys. Um, so, I'll grab a few more. So, here we go. The patterns go in here. Um, and in this station, you can only use a few materials. Well, you can use quite a few, but n none of them are that good, right? You can use wood. You can use stone. Um, pretty much anything that doesn't require a smeltery. So we'll probably use stone. Um, so you put stone in this ingot spot and it will tell you all the things you need to know about them. It'll tell you the trade it gives. Um, so your tool mines faster as it wears out, but does less damage. Um, then there's these extra stats. So the durability, um, the total durability of the tool will be multiplied by this. So obviously we're making a part, right? And at the end of the part, it'll multiply the final durability by whatever this number is. Um, that, that's if we're making a handle, right? And it also has, you know, all these stats. Um, and then the actual head, so if we're making an axe or a pickaxe or something, it tells you the durability, the mining speed, uh, oh, sorry, the mining level, the mining speed, and the attack. Um, so if we want a pickaxe head, which we do, we can see the relevant stats here. Um, it'll tell you the material cost and the pattern cost. Um, and then we can just grab it. And so this guy used two, um, what do you call it? To, to cobblestone. Apparently I'm struggling. And we got ourselves a pickaxe head. Now what I'm going to do is actually put the pickaxe head here. In fact, wait. I want to try it out with the sand. So I put the pickaxe head into the sand and then I take it out and we have... A, oh no, okay. So, so once you take it out, it resets, right? But at the moment it stays the same. So I wonder if this is a single time use. I wonder how this works. This is really cool. Um, How it used to work, if I search cast... Um, was there would be clay cars, and the, the clay cars, which I don't honestly, it doesn't look like they're here. Um, the, the clay cars used to be one-time use, so you could use clay to make the cars instead of gold. Um, but it would be one-time use. So I wonder if stands the same. Um, what are these? These look really cool. What do these use? Nether bricks and bronze plates. Interesting. Oh, this is from Thermal Series. Okay, I guess this is for yeah for a blast chiller. Interesting. So this uses Tinker's Construct Molten Liquids. Um, interesting. Okay. Anyway, um, I kind of want to give this a shot. So, let's put something in here. Um, we'll go for Platinum. Eh, yeah, we'll put the Platinum in. Now, previously with Tinker's Construct, um, you would actually get double... Here, let's, let's get another Lava Bucket. You would, um, you would actually get double the resources out. So, for instance, if I put in two Platinum... I should get four. Now, the Melter didn't do that. It didn't double. You got three extra nuggets, which I guess is all right, but it didn't double. Um, I want to see if the bigger smeltery doubles. Maybe it's just like a progression thing. So, let's see. We should get four platinum ore. And we do. Beautiful. So, I should be able to cast a platinum <laughs> tool head. It doesn't appear to work. Now, that could be for a number of things. Um, it could be. In fact, I want to see if this works. It could be because you're just not allowed to use platinum. Yeah, material tinker's construct unknown. So I guess we can't use platinum. We could probably use copper, no? Gold? It's also possible that um, the part builder just doesn't tell us, which honestly, that's what it kind of looks like. Um, so we might need something better. I'm very confused as to why I won't pour, though. All right, you know what? I think I'm going to try and make an anvil. So I don't think we're going to use whatever that slime steel stuff is. Um, I'm thinking steel might be the easiest. Block of steel. Does it have to be immersive engineering steel? Um, oh, no, we can use Mechanism of Steel. So, this should be pretty easy. All I need to do is ask myself for, for some steel. All right, so hopefully we have three blocks. We do now. Um, and then we just want to make it like this. So, seared stone or seared bricks like this. And the three steel blocks at the top gives us a Tinker's Anvil. Now, this is new to this version. So, 
who knows what it will do. Place it down, makes an anvil noise. Looks pretty sweet. Has a nice uh, 3D texture to it. Always got to appreciate that. Um, and this guy looks a bit cooler. You can still make pickaxes, but this time you can also make uh, sledgehammers, excavators, broadswords, and that appears to mainly be it, right? Not too much different from here. Yeah. Oh, the broadsword was here as well. So it's just the excavator and the sledgehammer at the moment. I'm, I'm sure that'll change in the future. Um, hmm. Ah, uh, look at this. So I right-clicked on the cast and then clicked on this casting table part. And you can actually see all the different things you can use. And I think platinum is just not one of them. I've looked through here and platinum was not there. Um, I believe copper was there though. So we can give copper a shot. Um, you can actually see some of the stats here. Um, interesting. All right, so I, I'm going to make a copper one. It, it's definitely not going to be the best, but it'll still be cool. So I'm going to right-click this to pour in the, the liquid. Let's see what happens to the glass. Um, the glass does get destroyed, right? So here we go. A pickaxe head. Um, now, from memory, paper was actually pretty good to use as a... I think it was a tool binder. So I will grab some paper um, j just to see if that still works. Um, and then I think wood was just pretty good for a, for a stick, right? For the tool rod. So we'll, we'll see if that works as well. I'll grab some pine planks. Um, so then what I'm going to do is head into the Tinker Station. Um, actually, I don't know if I have to use metal, uh, like the anvil, in order to put metal ones in. Let's see. Copper pickaxe head. Is it going to let me do this? Um, yeah, it, it, it's lit up, so it says it works. Um, however, I still need to make the other parts, right? I need to make a tool binding, which I think I'm going to use paper for. If it works, it doesn't actually seem to want to work. Yeah, okay, it doesn't seem like um, paper works. Um, all of these other things work, though. Ooh, do I want to use seared stone? Um, seared stone doesn't actually have um, better mining speed. Hmm, interesting. A as you can see, I can put iron in here, and it will tell me about it, but it doesn't give me the, the piece. Um, so I, I'm mainly just looking at the speed here. The other stuff I don't really care about. Um, I, I mean, I guess we're making it out of stone and then we need a tool rod, which just needs to be a normal tool rod because there is a tough tool rod, but that's for some of the bigger tools. Um, and I guess we'll just make it out of something, right? Okay. So where are we? Pickaxe. I'm going to put the binding in. I'm going to put the tool rod in. And here we go, we have a copper pickaxe. Now, previously as well, you used to be able to name these. I can't particularly see a way to name it here, but I mean, I assume you can just do it in an anvil anyway, if you really want to. Um, so, copper pickaxe. In fact, does this anvil have a way to do it? Doesn't look like it. Um, so, here's our pickaxe. It's pretty cool. It, it, it has all the traits and stuff. It has apparently three upgrades and one ability. I don't particularly know what an ability is. Um, but I guess it's got them. Um, I guess we can test it out on, I don't know, some seared bricks. Yep, it's definitely a pickaxe. I can confirm. It uses some durability. I think we repair it with, um, you know, some copper. Um, what does the dwarven ability do? I don't, I don't know if I read that. Um, it doesn't want to tell me either what the dwarven ability does. Hmm. How can I figure that out? Oh, here we go. I put it in the Tinker's Anvil right in the middle. And here it is. Miner's friend. Tool mines faster the deeper you mine. Just don't mine too deep. Interesting. Very ominous. Um, I'm actually going to leave this guy in here as well. Because as you can see by these symbols, it's suggesting that we can put a few things here. Um, it looks like ingots. I, I don't think that does anything. Um, maybe that's just for repairing. Maybe. Um, you can see diamonds, redstone, lapis, and what appears to be quartz. So I'm going to grab those. All right, here we go. I grabbed that stuff, and I also grabbed an emerald, because I think that does something cool, too. Yeah, it does. Um, increases durability depending on base durability. Illagers hate it. Um, so we can actually see it appears to double it, right? Roughly? Yeah, awesome. Uh, but you can also see, if you look in this spot here, it goes from three upgrades down to two. So it uses up an upgrade slot. Um, we can put in lapis, and now they don't have to go in their specific slots. They can go in any one here. And I think you can actually, you know, place them in multiple, and it will absorb all of them. So, as you can see, it's using up 32. And what this guy does is, it's essentially looting or fortune. So, it gives you um, nice things when mining or killing mobs. So, it, it works as fortune on a pickaxe, and it works as looting on a sword. Um, pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, and I'll, I'll, actually, hmm. It doesn't appear to use up upgrades, but 
It uses up abilities. That is really interesting. Okay. So, what does redstone do? Redstone increases the speed for mining and attacking. It uses up an upgrade slot. And you can see here, uh, swing and mine faster. So, that's pretty cool. Um, let's check out the quartz. So, what the quartz does, if we check this, is it increases the attack um, and uses up an upgrade. So, this guy, um, much sharper, dealing more damage. So that, that'd be good on swords. And diamonds, we can see... Changes a lot of stuff. The attack goes up, the, the durability goes up, the mining level goes up to diamond, the mining speed goes up, it uses up one upgrade, and it says increased durability and stats. So this is a pretty good one to add. Um, I don't think you can add multiple of it. But yeah, we, we can add these things in. Now, another thing I think you can do is actually replace the pickaxe head. So we can put a stone one on here. Obviously, stone's worse, but we can do it. And if we do it, it absorbs the copper one, it seems. I, I, I was mainly testing it to see if it would give it back. Um, but it absorbs it, and it gives you the new stats. So, what that means is, we could have this pickaxe. We can pump it full of all these different add-ons and stuff, right? And then we could just upgrade the pickaxe head, or the handle, or any of those things, um, as we get the new materials. So, you can essentially just keep your one pickaxe, and upgrade it as you go. Um, so, so, that's mainly what I was showing off there. Obviously... In the future episode, we're definitely going to have to mess around with some more of these um, Tinker's Alloys. Uh, I was trying to see if there was a way to search for the metals. Um, there's a lot of stuff here. There's Rose Gold, Hepatism, no idea what that is. Um, Manulin, th that, that's a classic, um, as well as Cobalt. Um, I think Ardite they got rid of. Um, Tinker's Bronze, you know what I like about this? It's called Tinker's Bronze. It's not just called Bronze. I, I think that is... a uh, a brilliant thing to do. Um, it might make some things confusing in terms of recipes, but uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I still prefer the fact that it's it's actually called something else. You know what I mean? Like it's a it's an actual different ingot. Uh, I, I enjoy that. Otherwise, it's just bronze. You know, th there's nothing interesting about it. I, I don't know. My, my opinion on that might change. <laughs> it's, it's a strange thing to have such a strong opinion on, but we'll, we'll see. Um, there's pig iron, and we can actually see how this is uh, made. This is made with um, iron, clay, and blood. And I'm sure this guy has some pretty cool uh, traits to him. Oh, and it seems like you can do some of these things in um, pneumatic craft. Really interesting. Pig iron, ice. I guess it block heat properties. So molten pig, a, a block of, or, or a bucket, I guess, on the ground. Uh, you can turn it into... I don't know, ice and air. <laughs> I, I don't know what that means, but sure. Um, very cool. Um, and then what else do we have? Queen slime, slime steel. And I think that's pretty much it. Silky block of jewel can be used as a beacon base. That's pretty cool. I think a lot of these can be used as a beacon base. I like it. And what's this? This is a bacon piece. Beacon place, b b beacon base, bacon piece. <laughs> There's also this book here, Materials and You. It uses a pattern and a book. Um, we might even have one. Materials. I think you get one when you spawn in. And I think when the pack was added, maybe? No. Okay, we're going to have to make one. Which, I mean, it should be fine. Just going to make another pattern, of course. Put all of mine in my other thing. Make this book. Um, and this guy usually has all the information you need. Um, because the mod just got updated, though, I think it is lacking in some departments. Um, but typically, you know, you'd be able to click on modifiers, and it will tell you all you need to know about them. Um, so you can scroll through here. You can see... You can add beheading, I guess, by adding these different things, by adding necrotic bones, copper, and TNT. Um, enemies drop their heads. Adding more obsidian and ender pearls increases the chance of decapitation. A little bit confusing, uh, I will say that, mainly because adding more obsidian and ender pearls, the recipe doesn't use obsidian or ender pearls, so it's a confusing recipe. Um, but, but once again, it only just got updated, so I think it's fair to uh, be a little bit rough. Uh, in fact, is that just the sledgehammer recipe? I don't... I'm a bit confused. Um, but, but yeah, th this is still a work in progress. It's on its way. Um, check the What's New page. Huh. I don't think that exists. Um, but, but yeah, you can find it um, on their Discord or on their GitHub if you, if you need more accurate information. Alright, so I think that's pretty much it. I think the only other thing I would check out... Uh, these different chests, the modifier chest, the part chest, and all that. In fact, I think I will. Just for the sake of seeing what they do. So, chest, planks, pattern, and lapis for the modifier chest. 
Let's also put some of this other stuff away. Um, the part chest is similar thing, but instead of lapis, it's sticks. And then a cast chest is seared bricks instead of the planks and stuff. It's still a chest, and this time a blank gold piece, which um, we don't appear to have in here. So let's grab a little bit of gold. Um, now, another thing to keep in mind is some things alloy, right? So if I put tin in here, the copper and the tin would combine. They would turn into bronze, uh, as far as I'm aware. So you do need to be careful when combining things. Like, I think... Did something combine? Yeah, we got rose gold, which is pretty cool. Um, so I guess I assume that's the iron, right? Maybe the iron and the gold. I, I I'm not too sure on that one, but um, I put the gold at the bottom because I actually want to make a cast here, um, for this recipe. All right, so we have the blank cast. Let's now get the cast chest. Bada bing, bada boom. So this used what? Just seared bricks at the bottom. Um, so this stuff, I assume I just want to place it all in a line here, and I think they all connect, right? Like, I think I can click on this guy, and we can click on all these tabs, as if we've just right-clicked on these things. Um, so, for instance, in the cast chest, I want to put this guy. In the modifier chest, I think I want to put all of these different modifiers. Now, I don't know how that would really work, like... Hmm. I, I guess maybe it's just easy access, right? Just, like, a little chest for modifiers. And I, and I guess if something doesn't go in here, like, sand doesn't go in, you know it's not a modifier. So, so I guess that works too. Um, part chest, I assume that would only take like um, leftover pickaxe heads or, you know, handles or tool rods. Um, but yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, some of these things as well, like the hammer, this guy mines in a 3x3 three three from memory. I, I, I don't know if that's changed or if you can change it or something like that. Um, so he's pretty cool to get. Obviously, you need the anvil for it. You can't actually make that hammer in this recipe, in, in this uh, tinker station. Um, but yeah, you can also apparently put modifiers in here. Which is pretty cool. Although it doesn't appear to have the gem and stuff. So I don't know if you can put everything in there. Not sure. Um, but I like it nonetheless. I'm big fan of the changes. A few small weird things like just that weird liquid in there. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's intentional or or something I've done wrong. Oop, we're, we're having some issues. Um, but yeah, I am excited to make a really cool pickaxe. Obviously, we've got netherite and unobtainium. I don't actually know. You know what? I will try and check. Can we use this stuff? Now, I don't know. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is try. I'm going to put three of this in here. Not enough heat. What heat does vibranium need to melt in a smeltery? Um, it requires soul lava. Because it, it, it melts at 2,500 degrees. Um, what about all the modium, I wonder? Is this the same sort of thing? This is um, 1,000. Okay, so we can use lava. You know what? Do I have any ore the modium? We do have some. And we actually have an ore. So I'm going to put the ore in here. Um, in one of these. Ha! Huh. Not enough heat. What do you mean, not enough heat? Maybe maybe it needs more lava? I don't, I don't know. So unless I read those things wrong, we should be able to smelt this stuff up. Um, although it appears as though we cannot. Ha! Huh. Look at this. Now it says 1,250. I swear it didn't say that before, right? I swear it said only a hundred, or only a thousand. All right, well, I just tried chucking in some of this stuff, um, some of the blaze rods. That didn't work, so I guess if we want molten blaze, we have to apparently cook up a blaze, um, in lava. So I, I, I guess, I, I, I guess that works. And then soul lava which is actually added from all the modium, um, is liquid soul and molten blaze. So you need the molten blaze, but then you get liquid soul, which is apparently by melting soul sand, or soul soil in this case, or a wither. <laughs> interesting, interesting. So it appears as though we're going to need some blazes to melt um, and all that sort of stuff, which sounds pretty fun. That, that, that sounds exciting, setting up, like, some sort of mob trap spawner thing. I don't even know how you'd do it. Like, like how you'd automate that. Very interesting. Soul Lava B. Okay. You know what? I bet you once they add these recipes back into the centrifuge, this guy would probably be pretty cool. Um, there doesn't appear to be a way to breed him, but I'm hoping they would add that soon. Especially now that Soul Lava's probably really needed. I don't know what you'd use it for otherwise. Ooh. In a, mag a magma tour. That's pretty cool. 
All right, well, I'm pretty happy. I, I feel like I can wrap this up. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, please do consider subscribing. It helps out the channel quite a lot. Um, thank you guys as well for just the support in general uh, over the whole channel, over all these series, and all the help in the comments. Um, <laughs> it's definitely been very helpful. Also, you know what? L let's do the what apparently has become a daily test, which is grab the evaporation blocks that we have and see if we can copy-paste a bunch in the sky. In fact, you know what's probably easier than copy and pasting? Probably just doing something like this. Now, I don't know if this works to this height, um, but we'll give it a shot. So these should be placing. Hopefully I don't crash the server, placing all these blocks at once. I probably will, and then I'll wrap up the episode, but we'll see. Ah, you know what? The, the problem was I was shift-clicking. Um, but this is working now, it seems. Boom, boom. I don't know if there's a height limit on this. We're about to find out. Um, hmm. I think there's a height limit because it doesn't look like it's working. Um, okay. Okay, it works this high. I, I'm slowly chipping away trying to figure out the height at which it goes to. I, I know there's probably a, a value, right? But that sounds like hard work. Okay, so, so we actually were on the right level. So let me break this and then I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay, so from Y82 to Y64, you guys can do the math. Um, so this guy should be more efficient, which means we should be getting more brine. I think you can do a few other tricks at the top, like you can um, put in some sort of a uh, solar panel system, right? Because it's like dissipated energy, apparently. Yeah, or, or something. I don't know. It should be a little bit more efficient. Worst case, you know, <laughs> we have a lot of evaporation blocks and we have a lot of... um. We have, we have another evaporation controller, right? Yeah, we have 28 of them. So we can definitely make a few more if we need it. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.